Okay, so this is a slight weird one for me, as I don't tend to cover builds that are more for PvP, but this is an exception. Shinobi's Vow is a simple yet powerful exotic that shut down players' movements and put a lot of pressures onto them if they try to heal or run away. On top of that, you also get energy back upon using them, so you're heavily pushed towards a grenade build to make the full use of them. But what are they like in PvE? Well, I've avoided using them in PvE until Arc 3.0 came out, and they work fairly well. In fact, they work the way I would expect them to do, and are very handy with facing an Overload Champion or Arc Captain. For me to better explain it, let me go through the setup I use and why this might be a build worth investing for the long run. But before we do that, you know who else loves Shinobu Val? You guys, hopefully. And there will be no slander around this, or else. So why not leave a like, a sub, and turn on notifications for more content like this in the future? I would really appreciate it. Starting with the subclass, we will be using Gathering Storm Super, but we will also be using Arc Staff when possible, as some activities will require us to mess around with super use. Skip grenades have a built-in 2 minute cooldown, which is pretty standard with the majority of grenades used. Luckily for our end, Shinobu's Vow can help us out quite a bit, thanks to his auto trait, will give you back grenade energy upon skip grenades damaging a combatant. Adding on Ionic Traces, Elemental Worlds and Demolitions to the mix with a 80-100 Discipline stat, and this should be enough for you to gain near infinite skip grenades back to back. Think of this as if Heart of Imus Light was available for the Hunters, but on the lower end of things. It's strong once in action, but it can fail if you miss the mark or overshoot the exotic. So here's what I have when running a setup to get the best out of it. We have Flow State, where defeating a jolted target makes you amplified. While amplified, our dodge ability charges faster, reload speed is greatly increased, and you become more resilient while dodging. We then have Tempest Strike, where sliding on the ground, then using your melee sends a vertical arc wave in front of you. For Fragments, you want Spark of Ions, but defeating a jolted target creates ionic traces. Spark of Resistance, while being surrounded gives you more resistance to incoming damage. Spark of Shock, where your arc grenades jolt targets. Spark of Shock, where your arc grenades jolt targets. And Spark of Discharge, where your arc weapons have a chance to produce ionic traces. For stats, we have 60 in Resilience, 100 in Discipline, and 20 in Strength. For key mods, we have Battle for Wild for plus 2 mods created, Form to Wisdom for plus 15 in Intellect, Elemental Ordnance for creating wild through grenades, Powerful Friends for plus 20 mobility and additional bonuses, Surge Detonators for allowing our grenades to stun over the champions, and Lightning Strikes twice, where throwing your grenade, you'll get a brief boost in grenade regen speed. Focusing everything into grenades is the key to making exotic work in all activities, including endgame, as this is where you'll want your energy to come and go to when possible. With Jolt being a thing, a single grenade can take out a large part of combatants in one go, and from that you should get at least 50% energy back upon use. This alone means you can stick to using just one skip grenade at a time without needing to dip into your second grenade, unless the situation requires it. For something that's more useful for PvP, Shinobu's is starting to show his capability pretty well in PvE. For weapons, we have the following which is dependable on the activity being played. For primary, I have the Smite of Moran with Demolitionist and Adrenaline Junkie, a great combo to have on any weapon and great for users who use the grenades a lot. As mentioned in the previous video, this weapon can only be gotten from King's Fall Raid, so you will have to farm it before getting lucky and getting the given drop. Great weapon overall that feels good to use and its origin trait is very handy for not needing to reload all the time while in the group. The thing about the weapon perk is that if you use grenades a lot, and I mean a lot, then you can get a constant 33% damage buff for the weapon and this means you can kill things faster and then get grenade energy back faster as well, etc. It all works in favour of you and the playstyle being used. So go get this weapon as it's really worth the investment. For secondary, we have the Sweet Sorrow AR with Pulse Monitor and Turnabout. This may look like a weird combo to have as I have another version with Triple Tap and Demolitionist, which would be better suited for the build. The one you are seeing now is part of the crafting version I'm doing, but the combo is still viable nonetheless. You see, Pulse Monitor will auto reload your weapon when you reach critical health, so very useful when you can't rely upon using your heavy or primary. And secondly, Turnabout will give you an overshield from destroying other elemental shields in game. It may be weak, but it's giving you a second chance to escape certain death. The overall role of the weapon is to not only destroy arc shields, but to also act as a backup weapon when things go wrong, and when playing endgame content, you'll get this a lot. Still, 
the choice here is down to you as having two primaries don't always make sense. So having the Brigand's Lore side on with Vault Shop is a great alternative to main. For Heavy, we have the Thunderlord, which is now even more better than before. Not only can this stun Overload, but it also has a Catalyst drop, which I'm slowly working my way onto. Heavy Machine Guns are very much favoured this season, and any Arc Heavy Machine Gun will be benefiting greatly from it until the end of the season. With the Catalyst, I can see these are being used for DPS phases and raids, or stationary targets with easy to hit crit spots, but I don't see it being the best of the best. All I can say is that if you haven't used it just yet, then now's the perfect time to pick it up and do so. For your stats, Discipline will be the only key stat that needs to be maxed out fully, or else the build falls apart. As mentioned earlier, you want to get 100 in Discipline and then add on additional mods and perk to keep the stat afloat, even out of action. So Demolitionist, Lightning Strikes Twice, I Want Traces, Elemental Wells, etc. You'll need to lean fully into the build crafting here just to make the build viable. Now you may be thinking this is a slight overkill as if you have Demolitionist on, then that should be more than enough which you are right. However, skip grenades are not that strong against major and above tier combatants, and if you wish to do some damage against them, then you may need to throw a secondary grenade to back you up. Skip grenades are more designed for taking out minor combatants in one hit, and weakening majors to ultras. With Jolt, we can do a bit of extra damage on the side, but that's not how we use this grenade. We need to use them on the weaker adds first, who may be paired up with a strong combatant, and then allow the grenade damage plus jolt to do its thing. This will be enough to outright kill or weaken anything stronger than them, but also allow you to not use two grenades for a single combatant. This is why it's a bit of an overkill, as if you want to use this in endgame, then you need to understand its weaknesses to do so. We then have resilience, which is at 60, and to be frank, I don't have a good armor set that accommodates both my resilience and discipline in one to use. If you can get this a bit up to say around 80, then you can use your sweet soul with the following perks to its fullest still. Both mobility and strength can stay how they are, as we won't be using them a lot except for melee on some situations. And then intellect will be used quite a bit as we do have the ashes to as a small attach that will grant us extra super energy on grenade kills, alongside Font of Wisdom mod. Leftover wise, we have Homolog Cypher mod for allowing us to create orbs of power via magic elemental type, invigoration for melee energy regen via orbs of power, and then Heavy Machine Gun mod for increased reserves. Now with the main basics covered, let's take a look at the mods we are using and how they play within the build. For Head, we have Resilience, Ashes to Assets, Homolog Cypher on the Battle for Well mod. Arm, we have Discipline from the Wisdom mod. Chest, we have Discipline, Thermal Shot Plating, because of Dampner and Elemental Orders mod. Leg, we have Maya Discipline, Heavy Machine Gun Scavenger and Powerful Friends mod. Cloak, we have Maya Discipline, Lightning Strikes Twice and Surge Detonator mod. Testing the build out in a number of activities to see how well it fares, it can put in the work as long as your grenades connect and the jolt effect kick in to do some hefty damage. One thing I've noticed is that using your grenades and keeping those effects going, you can make lightning strikes twice for example constantly give you grenade energy refill as long as you keep getting arc kills. Upon this use, it only gives you 3 seconds, but upon arc final blows, you extend this up to around 20 seconds. And this is very noticeable with the setup, as you can throw one grenade, and then keep throwing that same one again without needing to dip into your secondary one. This is why I mentioned that if you really want to make this build work against all combatants, you need to have them grouped up and allow your grenade secondary effect to kick in to do damage you need. So I went ahead and tested this out in Master Ket Crash, just to get a feel of it, and I didn't come across much problems with it. In fact, it really helped me out with doing as much damage as possible while being under level and all. I then tried this out in Master World Spring as well, and the same thing applied. It does really great damage in a short time frame, while also improving most of your gear and use. So from this, the Shinobu's Val and the build does have room to be used in endgame content, as long as the enemy size is fairly large. This also means that if you want to use this in raids, then there is no issue to this. Now how it fares in GMs is currently unknown though, as enemies are a lot tougher within such content, and some of the issues with GMs for such a build like this might be that it might not be strong enough to take out a major combatant, even with a minor combatant nearby. It might work fine in Devil's Lair for example, but work poorly in Glass Way. It can be said though that the build has shown what it is capable of, and you can use it in endgame scenarios, but I have my doubts for GMs as that's a different beast to deal with. I recommend you use this in master content and only master content. 
unless you want to test this out on how viable it could be for GMs at a later date. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with more Destiny general news and contents and builds. Once again, thanks for stopping by, stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next one.